Hi, I'm Elizabeth Reitz and I have Jemima Small versus the Universe. We are now on chapter 16, Fortune. Luna texted me on the way home from school asking me to see her urgently. She wanted to tell my fortune. I knew because she'd used the crystal ball emoji. I'd just taken the Brainiac's test and it was the first fat club tomorrow. So maybe Luna telling my fortune was exactly what I needed, a break from reality. The curtains were closed and Luna's whole cabin glowed with fairy lights. Jemima, she said as I went in. Swirls of gold eyeliner framed her eyes and colored jewels were stuck along the tops of her eyebrows. It was kind of like a fortune teller's uniform. I can feel a change coming, a feminine energy. I've had a premonition. Luna had premonitions occasionally. It meant she could see the future. Not like when meteorologists predict the weather or seismologists predict earthquakes. Those are based on actual science. Luna's predictions were based on her communicating with earth goddesses, which is why I only half believed them. A pack of emerald green tarot cards seemed to appear from nowhere and Luna began shuffling them. She spread them out in a semicircle on the table and told me to pick five. I knew the cards couldn't predict my future or see inside my head or my heart. But that's the thing about Auntie Luna. Sometimes she makes you forget the stuff you've learned in science lessons. I chose my cards and Luna slowly placed them face down in a crisscross shape, then picked up the card on my left. This card is how you see yourself, Luna said, turning it over. The Ten of Wands. It had a picture of a woman trapped underneath a stack of wooden sticks and a dead sheep on the grass next to her. Great, I said. Luna smiled. This is a great card. Luna, it's got a dead sheep on it. I mean, it's great that we're seeing it now. This card tells me you've got a lot of worries, you're feeling burdened, and it's hard to see a way forward. She tutted a few times. It also tells me now is not a good time to do the healing ritual I'd planned for you this weekend. I shook my head. Shame. Luna smiled and turned over the next card. This represents your potential, the tower. Maybe the tower sounded like good potential to you, but this tower had a bolt of lightning striking it, a huge crown falling out of the top window, and the whole thing was engulfed in flames. Luna's steely blue eyes flashed. So this card means your life is a total disaster? No, Luna laughed. This card may look a little frightening, but it signifies a sudden change. See this bolt of lightning here as a flash of inspiration. The foundations of the tower give way to new truth and new knowledge. Right, I said and stopped listening. Whichever card you picked, Luna always made it sound good. It's probably why she was so popular at the psychic fair she went to. I sat up and looked over at my reflection in Luna's dressing table mirror. No wonder my fortune was a burning tower of disaster and a dead sheep. I looked at Luna's sparkling bracelets and crystals and little pots of glittery makeup. I wished I could look like her, but if I ever said anything to Luna about feeling ugly or fat, she'd force me to listen to her chime music for hours and put healing stones in my pockets. She was saying something about order and harmony when I noticed her gold eyeliner pencil on the floor. It was exactly what I needed. Even if it made me look 1% better for Fat Club tomorrow, it would be a start. I checked Luna wasn't looking and then slowly reached down and put the eyeliner into my pocket, wondering if dad would notice if I wore makeup to school. And that's when Luna turned over the next card. It was a woman sitting in a forest wearing a long white dress with a crown of gold stars on her head. Her hair was super luminous, honey blonde. What does it mean? I asked, but I already knew it was good. An empress with a crown of stars and super luminous honey blonde hair could not in any way be bad. The Empress, Luna smiled at me. Being smiled at by Luna was a bit like seeing a rainbow. You know it's just a normal thing, but it still feels magical. The daughter of heaven and earth, Luna cried, raising her arms and almost knocking over a giant crystal. The symbol of feminine power. I thought this has to be good news for eyeliner. Luna held my hands tightly in hers. This card is a good omen, gemstone, a message from Mother Earth. I hope this didn't mean I'd have to rub scented oils into my skin again. Luna gazed intensely at me like she could see into my soul, as though she knew how worried I was about starting Gina's class tomorrow and like she could see the mum-shaped hole in my heart, as though she understood how badly I wanted to get on Brainiacs and how much I wanted to look like someone else entirely. It was like she could see every brainwave and feel every heartbeat. Jemima, she said, keeping her eyes on mine, a powerful goddess lives within you. But Luna always said that. 
I looked down at the Empress card and back at my reflection in the mirror. If that's true, I thought, then she sure is good at hiding.